Hey YouTube, a uh, quick little video today, just some of the items that I've been really enjoying uh, in the month of December. Um, I'm gonna keep it short, sweet. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments on any of the things I mentioned in the video. Um, do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you have them? <laughs> let me know. I uh, would love to continue the conversation in the comments. Um, cool, so the first item is my uh, trusty pair of uh, Visvim Grizzly boots. Um, so this is an item that I've just really enjoyed um, utilizing and wearing throughout the month of December. Um, these are my go-to winter boots. Um, I've had them for maybe around two years at this point, um, and they are awesome. They kind of can go anywhere, do anything type of boot. Um, again, these are the Grizzly uh, Mid Folk in the brown leather. They also came out uh, with a pair in black leather. I think that these are from 2016, I think that these came out. Um, but they're holding up really strongly. Um, I usually kind of tie the laces around uh, by the ankle here, so you can see where that's kind of worn in a little bit. Um, they do need a resole at some point, so the soles are getting a little more worn down, um, but looking to do that hopefully, um, you know, coming up so that I can keep enjoying them and using them. Um, so yeah, so the, the Visvim uh, Grizzly Boot Midfolk. Um, I am looking for the pair of uh, Visum Grizzly Boot, the ICT highs, um, with the kind of the mud dye and all that kind of stuff. Um, that uh, is, is something that I wanted to add to my collection for a while. So if, if you have a pair you're letting go um, to a fellow Visum fan, let me know, um, and then we can we can talk more about it. So yeah, so the Grizzly Boots um, would recommend go anywhere, do anything kind of winter boot. Um, I've really worn these in all kinds of weather, and they've held up great. Next item I'm actually wearing. This is a another Visvin piece. It's the uh, it's a just kind of a purple sweatshirt. Um, I think it's natural dyed, um, but I'm not entirely sure what natural dye um, they use on the purple. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, purple kind of jumbo hoodie. Um, I'll stand up a little bit. It's got the kangaroo pocket, um, which I've really enjoyed. Um, yeah, just a super comfortable hoodie. The thing I actually like about this one um, is that it's really lightweight. Um, so if you don't want something super warm, just kind of another layer that you can throw on. Um, this is perfect. I wear it all around the house. Uh, keeps me cozy. I like the hood. It's a really big, nice, nice size hood. You can just throw up, keep your ears warm. Um, so yeah, Visvim hoodie. Um, actually, on the topic of, well, I guess what I'm wearing today, um, is uh, another item that I really enjoy. And they're the Visvim, uh, if you can see, the Visvim um, jeans, the 01 D14 cut. Um, I've just really enjoyed wearing them. They're a looser cut of jean. Um, they have that really kind of famous iconic Visvim patch um, on the right leg. Um, yeah, I've been into more kind of loose cut denim um, as of late. It's just more comfortable. Um, I feel like it looks a little bit better. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've been really enjoying wearing uh, these jeans and this hoodie. It's kind of a go-to safe combo um, for, for kind of any outfits. Um, so let's, let's round out the Visvim theme first. Um, so I picked up two items that I've actually um, never owned before. So, um, these are the Visfim, uh, what they call a room spray, but my understanding is that it's marketed as a room spray so that they can avoid like kind of import taxes if you call it like a cologne. Um, so I really think it's kind of a multi-purpose. You can use it as a room spray, um, or a cologne. Um, so I picked up, uh, one bottle, this bottle, um, from a seller and then got it in. I, I've been wanting to try one of these for a while. I've seen it, um, on the Visvim, you know, site and kind of, you know, reading old Hypebeast articles. Um, so it's a Visvim collaboration with um, a Parisian perfumer called, I think, Blaise Mautin, I believe. Um, that's how you pronounce that. Um, and then they collaborated on a, on a number of different kind of room sprays and colognes. Um, so my understanding of kind of what this is, is that they use like really high quality raw materials um, in the fragrance, as opposed to like a lot of other houses or whatever, you use a lot of synthetics um, and things like that. So, um, which makes the cost obviously higher. Um, some of that might be marketing, um, you know, who's to say, it's hard to know. Um, but I can say is that I really love this uh, scent. So um, this one in particular, um, so I don't have the box, unfortunately. So I can't tell you exactly what the name is. Um, but this one in particular um, smells to my nose like amber, like kind of like trees, um, kind of like tree sap, very warm, rich, um, really, really nice fragrance. Um, so yeah, so that's this one. I loved it so much that um, I picked up another bottle um, that's a little bit more used than this one. Um, and this one, 
smells slightly different. Um, so I think I think that this is a separate, a, a different kind of uh, room spray. Um, they're both great in their own way. Um, the kind of cool thing is that they, they come with this little cap. Um, it looks like a test tube, which is pretty sweet. It's kind of a cool piece just to leave on, you know, your, your shelving or whatever. Um, just an interesting looking uh, design of the bottle um, and it smells really great. So yeah, I've been enjoying these, uh, especially as COVID's Omicron's kind of ramping up and stuff, spending a lot more time indoors inside. Um, nice to make your home really cozy. Cool. Um, the next couple of things are a, a new pedal that I was actually, actually just picked up um, yesterday or the day before. Um, so I had been on the Klon KTR pedal wait list for, I actually looked at my old emails for a year. Um, as of like December 30th, I think I emailed and requested to be on the wait list of last year. So I've been on the wait list for 12 months. Um, I've, I emailed them, uh, you know, every couple months saying, hey, is, is it in, is it in? You know, I, I really want it, really looking forward to it. Um, so finally, you know, about you know, a couple of days ago, they reached out and said, great news. It's your spot on the wait list, you're up. Um, you know, here's a link, check out. Um, so obviously immediately uh, checked out. And then, you know, two, three days later, um, the pedal came through. Um, so this is the Klon KTR. Um, so if you're not like a huge guitar player, you may not know much about kind of what this is. So this is kind of Bill Finnegan who made the Klon Centaur. Um, this is the Klon, the reissue KTR. Um, and the idea was that this is, he was able to mass produce this, you know, a little bit more frequencies. Um, the idea was that this would replicate essentially the same sound as the Klon Centaur, um, which if you know, you, you know that those go for like thousands of dollars and are kind of unattainable. They don't make them anymore. Um, I think they made around 8,000 of those. Bill kind of made them by hand. Um, so yeah, so I was super excited to get this, the KTR, or the Klon in general is like, for guitar players, like it's kind of mythology. Um, so yeah, so I've been really enjoying this. I, it says, you know, kind of remember the ridiculous hype that offends so many is not of my making on the front. I think that, you know, a little nod to the fact that kind of the hype and everything's driven up the cost of those pedals, um, maybe more so than the actual creator wanted or intended. Um, this also has a built-in buffer that is kind of funny that it says almost always better, almost always worse. Um, yeah, so, you know, pretty simple pedal, three knob pedal, um, with a foot switch. Um, but I've, I've really enjoyed this, um, pedal in my, you know, two days that I've had it, um, playing around with it as a clean boost, playing around with it as a kind of a light to have, you know, medium overdrive pedal. Um, you know, my understanding is if you, you want to kind of pump the gain above noon. So like, you know, around there, and then the kind of magical diodes start to kick in. Um, and then you're able to get some, some really awesome sounds out of it. So this is a keeper. Um, definitely not going to flip it. Um, this is kind of a pedal that I want to keep, um, on my board and, and in my life. Um, it says Klon, Somerville, Massachusetts, um, on the bottom, which is also kind of cool. Um, so yeah, Klon KTR. Um, Kind of the last two things that I've I've enjoyed in, in December are trying to get a little bit more back into hobbies. So um, walking around, taking pictures with my M8. Uh, I've really enjoyed um, the mechanical and, you know, kind of, um, you know, you kind of have to really intentionally take photographs with this camera. Um, so I really enjoyed that process. Um, I didn't have a laptop for a while. Um, so I finally also just picked up a, you know, the, a MacBook one of the new MacBooks um, and installed, you know, Lightroom, um, which I can now use my camera, walk around and insert the memory card really easily and, you know, edit my photos. Um, so yeah, just been really enjoying kind of getting back to that process and, um, and enjoying that. So um, yeah, so hopefully everyone's doing really well. Um, you know, leave a comment. Are any of these things interesting to you? Um, you know, what have you been enjoying in December? Um, yeah, leave me a comment below. We'd love to hear more from you guys. Um, Follow me on Instagram. I've been, as I said, trying to take and post more pictures. Um, yeah, let me know what do you guys think, um, and I'll talk to you later. And if, if you know, don't see you, hope you have a happy and healthy holidays and new year. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon.